other one in the world doing God's work either. Amen. God is still working with old farmers, yes, men and women who never finished 12th grade some, in some place of this world. Let, let's not get beside ourselves. Uh, we just bless. These are just some extra blessings God is letting us have. So we find the selection. David didn't look look like he would be the kind of leader in the eyes of Samuel. But that's what God said. I, that's the man I want. That, that, that's who I want. I want the David like character. And you remember, as shaggy as David was, if you look at his credentials, later on, David looked to be a failure. Mm -hmm. But what did God say about it? And in final analysis, God said what? He was a man that was on his own You see what we're talking about? So it is not for you and I to judge who God said. My mother used to say, time will tell. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, let me just show you this here, because um, I, I don't want you leaving with the bitter and a critical spirit. I stand as a failure or successful before the eyes of one person. You do. That's God. Look at Romans. Uh, help me, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to find that spot where it says he stands a fail before his master who would be the judge. I, I didn't have this uh, because I didn't know I was going to get to this point. But I, I, I like to uh, uh, look at some things. So let's see. Okay, come on, let's look at uh, Romans 14 chapter. I want you to look at whether we should judge God's people or not. Sometimes you might have to have a lunch with them and sit down and talk with them. Uh, and I, I, I'll give you a good illustration. My, the guy who was my counselor before Tony Evans became my counselor, I was Professor Hopkins, white gentleman, would come out to my church two or three times a month, I must thank him to hear me preach. He knew I was gifted in preaching, but he also knew, Sister Neff, I was not so gifted in handling people. And each week he would ask me, hey, you want to go out for lunch? Now, this is a professor, white gentleman. You want to go out for lunch? I said, yeah. And I just asked him one day, Professor, I think you want to tell me something. He said, thank you. to judge the 
one who eats, for God has accepted him. Now watch this. Right. Watch this cousin. Who are you to judge the servant of another? Look, to his own master he stands the fall. I fall before God, not before you. Just say, and by first. To his own master. Christ is our master. It is Christ that we fail or we are success. Have success. Not your, you know, nobody else. We're not there to judge that person. Now, I know the saints will judge the world. I know that. I know pastors have roles that when stuff going on in the church, we got to stop it and put a nail on it right there. But I'm talking about unjustifiable judging a person because he's not where you are at the time. And, and reason I'm saying this is because we students, <laughs> either you got all the, you got a lot of Bible knowledge, it's going to be hard for you tolerate people with unbiblical conversation. I'm mm -hmm. serious. You know, mm -hmm. That has been my weakness. Your expectation of a Christian who's been saved 10, 15, 20 years is going to be just like mine. You want to see some fruit. Mm -hmm. And if there is no fruit, I'm willing to say to you right now that there's going to be some reservations in your mind. Sir. 